Hi guys, welcome to Shaq's World, my name is Shaq. On the last hit and run video I made for you guys, two weeks ago, I showed you guys a footage of a lady reversing to my 2017 Suzuki GSX-R 1000 and then driving off. And I even showed you guys the damages on it. I'll put in the link below for you guys to check out the last video. The good news is I found the lady that reversed into my motorcycle. The bad news is I don't have insurance. So on this episode, what I'll be doing is I'll be telling you guys how I managed to find the lady that reversed into my motorcycle. But before that guys, please smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Shaq's World. So let's get started. You guys might be wondering, how did I manage to find the lady that reversed into my motorcycle? Well, it wasn't an easy task. However, I still managed to find the lady that reversed into my bike. So I went to my local police station to file a police report. I showed him two video footages. The first video footage was the lady walking towards her car. You can see her face very clearly. The second video footage was the lady reversing into my motorcycle and driving off. I said to the police officer, you have all the evidence that you need. How long would it take you guys to find the lady that reversed into my motorcycle? Because this motorcycle is only three months old. The police officer said, Shaq, we're very happy with the evidence you provided. However, it's going to be very hard to find the lady that reversed into your bike for two reasons. The first reason is the number plate is blurry. It's going to be very hard to find her. Second reason is unless she has a criminal record, it's going to be very hard to find the lady that reversed into your bike. Yes, we can see her face in the camera, but if she doesn't have a criminal record, it's going to be very hard to find her. That was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I went back to the convenience store. I said, you really got to help me out. I only had this bike for three months and I don't have insurance. I'm so stressed out. Any information that you have about this lady will help me find her. He said, Shaq, I might have some information that will be useful for you. He goes, the first information is... She's a regular customer. She comes here every two or three days. The second information is she lives around the area. And what he done is he gave me a good idea. He goes, if you drive around the area, maybe you'll find the lady that reversed into your motorcycle. And I said, that's a good idea. So what I done, I took a few shots of the lady's face and a few shots of her car. I went home and I'm just thinking, 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 how am I going to find the lady? Uh, it was about 10 o'clock at night, I still couldn't sleep. 11 o'clock, I still couldn't sleep. So I said, you know what? I'll grab myself a piece of paper, a pen, and my mobile phone. I also printed a map of the surrounding areas as well. I drove around the area, each street that I see the matching car, I'll put a tick against it and take a photo of the car. So if it's a Honda CRV or Honda HRV, I'll take a photo. It doesn't matter if it's a dark silver or like a lighter shade of silver, I'll still take a photo. I left my house around 11. From 11 to three o'clock in the morning, all I would do is go around the area and take a picture of every single Honda CRV or HRV. By three o'clock in the morning, I found about 10 Honda HRVs and CRVs. Next morning, I went to work again. I woke up early because I couldn't sleep from the stress. Um, I took my piece of paper, my pen, and my phone. So I had the photos of the cars in my phone, and I had the registration numbers and the street names on the piece of paper. So what I would do is I would go car to car, see who goes inside the car and leaves the driveway. So if it doesn't match the lady, I'll put a cross against it. So I done that from eight o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon. So I went to the first car. The first car didn't have a tow bar, so it didn't match the car that hit my motorcycle. The second car had a step ladder on it. It didn't match that car as well. The third car um, had a mirror in the back. It didn't match that car as well. The fourth car and the fifth car, it was like a darker shade of gray. It was more of a gold kind of a silver so those two cars didn't match I was left with five cars 
So on the sixth car, he had a mirror in the back as well. So I said, okay, that car doesn't match. On the four, I think it was on the seventh car. Yeah, it was the seventh car. That car didn't move at all. So that car was suspicious. I put a tick against it. On the eighth car, what I've done is, the lady that was walking towards her car, it didn't match the same lady that reversed into my motorcycle, so I put a cross against it. On the last two cars, there was about two cars left, um, they were suspicious. None of those two cars moved the whole day. So I'll go street to street. I'll go to the first street, that car didn't move, I'll go back to the second street. And I'll go to the first street again, and then the second street. I done that from about just after midday till about four o'clock in the afternoon. About quarter to four, one of the cars, I saw a lady walking towards her car and it matched the exact same description of the lady that reversed into my motorcycle. As soon as she saw my face, she just drove off. What she didn't realize is I had her number plate written down on my piece of paper. So the only thing I needed was the house address. I got the house address as well. Went straight to my local police station around four o'clock in the afternoon. I said, now you guys have all the evidence that you guys need. Please get me the lady that reversed into my motorcycle. The police officer said, Shaq, I'm sorry, we can't help you. I'm not in charge of your case. The last police officer who wrote your statement down is in charge of your case. I'll give you her email address, send her an email with your evidence, and then we go from there. I said, okay. That was on a Thursday afternoon. So I'm waiting, Friday, no answer. Saturday, no answer. Around 10 o'clock at night, I get a text message from New South Wales Police saying we found the lady, that's the lady's name, that's her insurance details. Now it's up to you and her to work it out. And they gave me her driver's license number and contact number as well. I just couldn't believe my eyes, I was so happy. Now I got the lady's details on the next episode. I'll tell you guys exactly what happened. If the lady fixed my motorcycle or not. But before that guys, please smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Shaxwold. Thanks for watching.